Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we're gonna be looking at screen replacement one more time. We're gonna be looking at how I did this shot for Edward Zorab's music video for Pip Blom. It's a super cool music video, I'll leave the link in the description below. The footage you're seeing here has been shot by Jakob Thorhausen, whose work is really, really crispy. And Jakob is actually a visual effects artist himself, so he has been doing some of the screen replacements for this music video, and then Edward reached out to me to do some of the other shots in there. And one of them was this one over here. We have an over-the-shoulder look on our character, who is watching TV and the second character of the music video gets introduced through the television screen. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know that we've done a sad green screen tutorial before in which we kind of tackled the wrong way of doing screen replacement, but sometimes you kind of have to go about it that way. And in that example, we had to deal with a piece of crumpled up green screen that was covering the glass of the screen. Now in this example, if we look at the television screen itself, we don't have anything going on there. We have a clean reflection which we can use afterwards to add the detail of the glass back on top of the television. Except for that, there are also no tracking markers in the shot, which in this case doesn't really matter because the television has such a clearly defined shape. If you were to just planar track this and dedicate each corner to a corner pin, you would probably already be getting extremely close. So in this case as well, no need to add motion trackers, otherwise you're just gonna have to do the paint over afterwards in post. Before we get into the tutorial, I would like to quickly have a look at our ArtStation store. If you scroll down all the way to here, there is a CRT TV diode texture. It's a free product. You can just download it if you have an ArtStation account, I believe, which I think you should actually have if you are a filmmaker or anyone who's interested in pre-production and post-production stuff. The CRT diodes, as you can see, are just three different alpha masks that have an offset of the diode strings. And then by shining an R, a G, and a B channel through each of those, you get a full composite when you push out, but you also get the moiré effect if you start moving around it. Cool, that's everything, and let's get into After Effects. Before we get into the tutorial, I would like to ask you to hit the subscribe button to get updated with all of our future content, all of our future tutorials, and like other stuff like interviews and, you know, just the filmmaking process broken down. Cool. All right, so I've got this window pulled up on the right. It's a pure ref window. I have some shots of CRT TVs that are turned on. We have our TV plate in the background here, and we also have a duplicate of it later with a mask. The first thing I would like to cover is how to get this mask going. The way I went about it is you select your background plate and then you go to animation and then track in Boris Mocha. You open Mocha or Mocha Pro and then inside of here you just grab the pen tool and start working around this. Now this is a very dark shot so seeing exactly where that border is is a bit tricky. But there is this luminance thing over here and if you hold it and then like rotate it it's it might be a bit weird if you don't know that that's what you should be doing because it's not like going up or down you rotate it around and then you can this doesn't affect the actual footage it's just for the viewport then it's x and z on your keyboard that you should be thinking about z is zooming in by scrolling up and down and x is just moving cool that's all you need to know I am going to be making a mask like this and then this. Uh, still tricky to see. I guess it's there. I'm choosing all the edges that are the extremes from where the curvature is happening. I don't have a point there, but you can always add a point. Then just hit control and with all the points selected, you can like drag them in and then it's just about refining. Cool. 
All right, once you have your basic shape ready, you can select the surface tool up here, and that's when you drag your corner pins. And because we know this entire surface of the television is facing the same direction, we can also just expand our surface all the way there. And if you then select this thing, let's zoom out a bit, you can see, oh, that seems to be looking fine. And if it's not, you can just come in here and just move these things around a bit. Maybe we want to stretch it, get it further straight up. And there you go. Once you're happy, just hit track forward. If you look down here, you can still make some changes depending on your shot. So in this case, we do like to have the shear. We would like to have the rotation and scale. We don't need perspective because there's no 3D movement going on here. Large motion is fine. Small motion is really only if you want to track like camera jitter or something like that. And that's it. If you have something crossing the frame that you want to eliminate, you can just go in and make a new mask. Like let's say this guy would be um, crossing the frame and corrupting whatever the track is that we're trying to get. You could basically make a general mask around your character. And then if you leave it on top of your character, that means the tracker will believe it's also on top. So you can just select one of a, you can just select a different color over here and you can either track them both at the same time or you can track one at a time. And you can do that by turning on or off these cogwheels. Either way, we don't need this, we just need this. And I'm just gonna track forward and then I'm gonna hit export over here or save. Once you leave, you can extract your mask. I have the mask over here onto this duplicate and it's fully animated and sticks to the TV. Now that we have a cutout of the TV, everything gets very easy. Cause the next thing we want to do is we want to add the television footage on there. So for that, I have a new pre-composition. Before I dive into that pre-comp, I would like to say I have also exported the tracking information to a new null object. Just layer new null object, and then you export the Boris Mocha data to that object. You export the tracking data. And if you hit U, you can see that you just have all your keyframes there and everything like the footage just gets parented to that null object over here. So as you can see, we have a few copies of this effect that are parented to the null, and we have the motion blur turned on as well for those layers, which is just a finishing touch really, but you know, it's necessary if the footage is moving. We have the footage in the back, which is really just simply the footage. It's a four by three shot. It's turned black and white and there is some text. We do know what black and white looks like on the CRT TVs. And that's mainly these two references over here. So we're definitely gonna be blooming this out a bit and we're gonna be turning it colder until we get to something that doesn't overpower the shot. The first thing that I did is I positioned the shot in 3D space. So I turned the 3D toggle over here and I moved the shot to be exactly where the other footage should be. The best way to do this is just copy paste one more layer of your footage behind your black and white footage. And there you go. This is, as you can see, it's a bit offset, but I wanted the character to be nicely framed up in this shot and I didn't want to make the footage too small so that we had issues with the edges. On top of this footage, I added a posterized time effect, which is just a very simple effect that can allow you to redial the frame rate of that specific clip. On top of that, I added a optics compensation effect. As you can see, it bulges the edges of the footage. This gives a bit more of a feeling that the footage is being refracted by the glass that's on top of it. And then, a Gaussian blur of 24%. So as you can see, we're completely blurring out the footage. If I were to zoom in over here, you can see how because these diodes are each showing one single section, 
The footage actually looks sharper than what it really is. But most of these TVs really didn't have that good of a resolution to begin with. So we're blurring it out a bit and then we're going to try to preserve some detail with a few other layers. I have a duplicate of that layer and I have masked out just the corner areas of where the character is standing. I wanted to give her a bit more of a halo in the shot, also emphasizing a bit that CRT effect that some areas have been blown out and, and those diodes are burnt a bit more into the screen. So Gaussian blur here is set to 1, the exposure takes it up a notch and then we have an invert node that's basically making it brighter. The opacity is set to 11. If I were to put that to 100, you'll see kind of what that effect is. So it's inverted, but it's brightening up all the shadowy areas, giving it a bit of a halo. And because it's sharper, because we have a lower Gaussian blur, that also introduces some details in some areas. And then setting it to 11 just really gives almost that kind of a high pass effect in that area. We have one more duplicate that has a Gaussian blur of 1 and a opacity that's animated. It starts from 18% and then it goes up all the way to 50. What that does is it creates a bit of a focus pool inside of the footage, but it's not really a focus pool. But it's trying to insinuate that footage from CRT TV is kind of pulsating at some rate and all these little imperfections in the footage are making sure that it feels a bit more believable. The next thing we have is a adjustment layer and this adjustment layer is where we really dial in the color. So if I turn that on, here you go. We've added a curves adjustment, we're not playing with the alpha channel, we're not playing really with the RGB main channel, we're increasing the blues, we're increasing the greens a little bit, we're decreasing all three of them, we're decreasing the blue greens to the same extent and then we're decreasing the reds even more. So the main thing is get rid of the reds, get rid of both the blue and the green to a certain degree in the shadowy areas to get these slightly warmer shadows, almost like a purplish tone. And then on top of that, you increase the blue and green until you get the right level of cyan that you're looking for. Now on top of that, I have a super low resolution video of a CRT TV making some weird VHS glitches. I have a Optics compensation set to that, It's except for that it's the same uh, aspect ratio. Then I have key light going on it so that we get rid of the blue and I have masked out some area in the center so we don't interfere too much with the character. And it's just a very subtle glitch that's going all throughout the footage that just makes it naturally look more like a CRT TV. Then on top of that, I wanted to create a bit of a flicker on the screen. The way I can go about it could technically be anything. Because you could create a solid and add a gradient effect to it and then add a colorama effect to it. Then just alt click the evolution and set an expression like time times uh, 250 or something like that. Or you could wiggle the opacity of a white layer that you set on top of it. You could do anything, but you know, in this case I was trying out the strobe light effect. Um, I hadn't really used it before, but new adjustment layer, strobe light effect, blend with original set to 93, strobe duration, period, strobe probability, random seed, and then you just set it to add. Um, I don't know how much of this is default, but I do know that it works really well and it allows you to kind of get this flicker effect that's all throughout the footage and you can pretty quickly dial in and even animate each of these parameters. So yeah, I don't mind this effect, I quite like this. On top of everything, there is a cine grain, film grain. So the reason I'm adding it in here is because the footage was already delivered with film grain on top of. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of working, it doesn't matter, it, like, it's fine. So we just put it in here. And then all of those things come together as being a pretty nice backplate that we can keep working on. So that backplate is actually a bit too big for the cutout of the TV, 
which is why we have a duplicate of the layer with the mask. We're setting the video to alpha mask. Just for the sake of understanding it better, I'm making this green so we know that's the base plate for the TV. And then we're keeping the aqua for the back plate. Then comes an interesting one. I have precomp 8 set to add. What is precomp 8? It's basically the system we just made with the null precomp together. So I duplicated the backplate we just made and I duplicated the alpha mask and I duplicated the null object and then those three things together got precomposed and that's this precomp 8. Now inside of the TV plate, what that's doing is I have set that to add. As you can see, it's increasing the overall brightness of the shot but I have it masked set to subtract. So it's really only the surrounding and not the middle that's brightening up. Now the thing is I have it set to 20% so it's not as strong as it could be. As you can see it could be really really strong but it's not even really going to be showing up too much because on top of that I have another duplicate of that green system and this one again is set to normal. So as you can see we're cutting it back out but we're not completely cutting it back out. This one over here, I have slightly changed the mask options that we have on top. And as you can see right inside of the edge of that footage, we're getting a bit of a glow that's going in. And that's the glow that's coming from the previous brighter version, the precomp eight, the brighter version. So there you go. That's what we have here. And then we have one more duplicate of that, which I'm going to make dark green. That one is set to add, set to 100% and it goes right on top. But look where it is going. So if I turn on my mask, you'll see that I have masked out this section at the bottom. So if you look at the position coordinates, I also move down that layer until the text bit, which is the bright part, is sitting on top of this edge over here. Now I have actually flipped the layer as well so that we have a vertical reflection onto this little edge over here. And then the footage has a Gaussian blur set to 0 0.5 because the background is pretty much dark anyway. And the layer is set to add. The only thing you get really is just that text sitting on top of it. And then we have the final layer on top, which is the video again the original video with an exposure effect that's crunching down the gamma. And if you set that on top, you reintroduce that detail from the TV. It brightens up all the values. You get the shadow on top of the TV. And that's when kind of you get everything coming full circle. And that's the way we did this shot. Of course, the problem you have with this method is that you don't have any interactive lighting on your subject. You could manually get that in if you feel like you really need to. But in this shot and with a lot of visual effects shots, it's about at which point can you sell the illusion? At which point does the person stop thinking about, oh, I'm looking at something fake or you're just watching and are like, yeah, they're watching TV and it's believable. So before we go, I would like to show you how the CRT diodes work and then we can get out of here. Cool. We're going to be looking at this shot, for example. It's the same approach. It's basically the exact same setup. If we go inside of this bottom one, what we can do is select these layers over here and then hit precompose. I'm just going to call this R duplicated, call this G duplicated, call this B. Now we're going to separate the red, green and blue channel by using a shift channels effect, turn off the green, turn off the blue, duplicate the effect, turn off the red, turn on the green, turn off the red and turn on the blue. Cool. Set the top two to add and you've got the final footage again. Now what we can do is we can drag the CRT diodes into this project and I'm just going to be dragging them right on top. They're a bit big as you can see, you can scale them down. I'm going to drag the red one on top of the red, the blue on top of the blue and the green on top of the green. We set that to luma mat, luma mat, luma mat. 
Cool, there you go. So the first thing that happened is we cut out the exposure value of these shots drastically, but we are getting the nice color banding that we should be getting. All right, so I've duplicated the whole system, including the red two, I set that to add, and now we have a bit more brightness values. As you can see, if I turn that down, this is what we had, and this is what we're getting now. Now, the next thing to do is we can go, we can go back to this shot to see what we are working with. There you go. It's still a bit dark and we're still losing a bit of the intensity we would like. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm adding a duplicate that's clean. I'm calling that base and I'm going to set that to add. Now we can lower the opacity until we get to something that feels correct. Feels something like this. Feels fine. And yeah, there you go. You got your bright TV, but you also got your banding going on. And if I were to play this video, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. Cool. That's basically it. I hope this tutorial was useful. Again, if you want to see our tea diodes, come to the art station store. To be honest, come to the art station store in general. There's like a bunch of stuff that you can use for your CG projects or your After Effects projects. Um, also, grain control. Grain control for those using After Effects. It's just a few effects stacked on top of each other that allow you to control where the grain is on your footage and where it's not. So, yeah, cool. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to check out more tutorials or if you want to check out our personal work being uploaded soon. And cool, yeah, that's about it. Hope you have a good day and cheers. Bye bye.